Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Bizonet and I'm a fourth year in the Central Michigan University saxophone studio and today we're going to talk about Furling Etude number 12. <laughs> Alright, so now I'd like to take the time to talk about a few concepts that can help you get further along in your learning process. First of all, you'll notice that at the top of the page it's marked 132 is the quarter note. However, for all state guidelines, they would like you to play it at 120 beats per minute. It makes it a little bit easier for you. Another concept that is good to know is the idea of dynamics and the direction of the piece. You'll notice right away when we start on the fourth bar, the third line, you have that F natural starting at forte and immediately up by beat two, you're diminuendoing down to mezzo forte. Um, I would recommend to add more contrast to make sure you're doing a true mezzo forte, possibly even a mezzo piano plus, to make sure you're getting that growth all the way through those two bars right there on the fourth line. Um, and anytime you see a long crescendo, a long diminuendo, any um, sudden dynamics, you definitely want to bring those out to make it more musical because it's already going to be more difficult since you have a very technically fast etude. It is also important to pay attention to the articulations. It comes around very often, especially in the main theme of the etude. And you'll notice there's a staccato on the E of the four note grouping. You want to make sure that the E is very short and staccato and light, not too heavy on the tongue, more supportive with your air. But more importantly, I think it's important to look at the and beat. You almost want to kind of cut it off a little bit, not with your tongue, but more just lift the air to help propel you into the staccato that will then support for a really great articulated passage. Lastly, I'd like to talk about some good fingerings that you could use. Um, first thing that comes to mind is for the third to last line, that last bar, starting on that low C sharp. And I would recommend, instead of using side B flat, which is one, two, in this low side key, I'd recommend you use your bisque fingering, which is one, and then you kind of rock your first finger over and hit this little small key called the bisque key. And that way you just have this really easy motion and you don't have to worry about anything with your right hand niching it into the side. Going along with the light articulation that we talked about before, I think it's important to bring out the accents because they are different than a staccato. For example, going back to that fourth line and the last bar on beat three, on that C natural, there's a accent. So I think it would be good if you distinguish the difference between da 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 going into that, and let me show you. In the last bar, it's important to note that even though the last quarter note was on beat three, it should still be a full quarter note and take you all the way to beat four. And you want to end with enough oomph that you make sure the etude feels final and complete. I hope this helped with your process for auditioning for Allstate this year, and I wish you the best of luck.